Now here's a blast from the past. Who here remembers these? You'll have to think back away, but I'm sure there are enough people in the United Kingdom that remember these things. Let's just unplug it and let's see what we can find out. So this is an Alcatel Speed Touch USB, often known as a frog. Uh, it's supposed to be a mantle ray. They are also available in skinned frog, space frog, squ squash frog, and torched frog. Um, it's just the names that they uh, seem to build up in the community. These were the first common ADSL modems that were put out by BT and their providers. And I believe this is actually the launch modem for BT's ADSL service. Um, there were several iterations of it, and as you can see, we've got a phone socket in, and it's a USB device, it's a PPP device. They were really common, actually getting a hold of one took some doing, and without the software for them, and support in modern versions of Windows, there's not a lot you can do with them. Unfortunately, although I can provide an ADSL, ADSL signal for this, actually getting it up and running is beyond what I'm really going to invest the time and money in doing. So we'll have a quick look in it, but there won't actually be much. Now, the way this works when you connect it to a PC is the firmware is actually uploaded to this. This has no built-in firmware other than what is required to bootstrap it. This caused some problems for Linux users at the time because obviously there was no binary blob available that included the firmware for these until much later. It was the only USB modem initially that was supported by Smoothball at the time and until we managed to look at putting the ECI and BWAN drivers into the kernel, into the Smoothball kernel. It was one of the few options you got. The BWAN followed pretty quickly, which was a US, uh, PCI based version. And then we found um, the ECI drivers and we found all sorts of genuine, all sorts of general extra USB devices. But USB was your best bet for uh, ADSL back then. So this would be used as a PPP device. Windows would manage the PPP session, which automatically means that this will not work with Windows 7 because Windows 7 PPP is completely broken. So we need to get in this. As you can see, I've had a quick look and it appears to be uh, a fairly non-trivial process. So let's just tear in a bit more and see if we can find any more screws or anything. But unfortunately, this is going to be a fairly violent end for this. I have never personally seen inside one of these. And obviously these were designed to be more or less throwaway devices. I think there's another screw under there. No, there, no, there isn't. The screws aren't fitted. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six clips around the edge. I'm actually thinking, because this is never going back together and never going to be used again, we will just cut those with my old old junky pair of cutters. This pair of cutters is no longer sharp enough to be used for much, so they are used for vandalising electronics. There we go. Right. Will it now come apart? it will. So again with the theme of much older equipment you can see we've got a nickel plate on the inside there no one was quite sure just how much noise these were going to produce and looking at the date markings here don't quite know how to read these but I'd say this is 2001 we might find a better date in here. Let's just get rid of these tangs they're really going to stop us. Again, you can see that there is a lovely amount of shielding in there. That's all shielded. We've got our two light pipes on the front. Now again, this is just going to be an ASIC. So what have we got in here? So we've got our ADSL line interface here, which is actually, let's get me a pokey actually a module so maybe this is something that they would change depending on the country but that's completely isolated from everything else and you can see the isolation carries on around the back here 
um, surge and lightning arresting arrestment. Surge and lightning arrest are wise. There doesn't seem to be a lot there, although arguably that there could perform some of that function. We have a massive set of caps there. But what have we got going on here? Right, okay. I'll check I'll take that back. So all of this is USB on this side. So there's our USB cable coming in. Data plus, data minus, and power. And then our USB. I believe this is actually a multi-layer board, so who knows where that disc disappears off to. And then our ADSL is coming in here into this device, which is a choke. We have more coils and those big caps there. So yes, this is almost certainly going to be involved in the lightning protection for this. We have a custom here, Alcatel Speed Touch Custom. Speed Touch was the Speed Touch USB were not the only thing that uh, Alcatel were making at the time. They were making uh, routers based on Speed Touch technology, and there's no idea to know exactly what that is. It does have an ARM logo on it. So the chip we have there is an SACHU 1A05. So maybe we can find something on that. That appears to be paired with an ADSL chip or an ADSL D as they call it which is an Alcatel 2440 and that will be the modem that will be what's doing all the work this will be working in conjunction with the USB interface to convert what's coming in from here to PPP and managing ATM frames um, assuming that it is using ATM based technology and then we have some RAM so I'm not overly sure what that module there is actually doing I can only assume that that is actually a power supply. It does appear to have a part number, um, but again, it's an Alcatel part number, AC603ABAC01. So my guess would be this is a power supply module rather than what I thought it was, which is called a slick or subscriber line interface. And this will be generating our three volts and five volt supplies and all our analog lines for this. We have this section up here and I don't know if you'll see it on the video but there is our telephone pair or underneath there so this is more signal conditioning and then it goes up to our modem chip here what are we running at we are running at 20 megahertz I believe there and that doesn't have a usable number on it so let's see what we've got for dates so our Samsung chip here appears to say 01. Uh, don't know that, that has a usable date on it. That appears to say 01. That says 01. That says 01. So yeah, it looks like we're looking at about 2001 for this particular module. They lasted a long time um, with things like Windows connection sharing in Windows 98, I believe. They were quite useful bits of kit and they were long lived. It's only really when we started to jump to newer technologies and people wanted to connect more than one machine that we started to see the modems. Um, I'll do a teardown of an equally early uh, modem router um, shortly. But yeah, they were long lived, they were in service for quite a long time, and they were actually quite reliable. The nice thing about them being as bare bones as they were is a lot of the information and statistics about the line were available to the end user, which means you could do some digging into uh, what might be going wrong. But anyway, there we go, inside of the, uh, I believe they were the squashed frog, and uh, that's all that's in there. Not much, but uh, hope you enjoyed. Bye.